The Pandavas are the true heroes of Indian mythology. The river Ganga was flowing like a silver stream and the birds were seen diving for fish in the river. A heron stood watching the birds. On this day, it saw a bright young man walking towards the river. Dressed in silver armor, with stern looks, he was tall and handsome. He came and stood on the banks of the flowing Ganges. He is none other than Bhishma. Bhishma is the son of King Shantanu and vowed not to marry to enable his father marry the fisherman's daughter he had fallen in love with. She had two sons but both died young. Their widows through a sage gave birth to Dhritarashtra who was blind and Pandu who was pale. These thoughts were running in the minds of Bhishma. As Bhishma was silently watching the flowing Ganges, a beautiful woman dressed in white with golden ornaments came from the river and touched him. My son Bhishma turns in pleasant surprise. He falls to her feet. Tears roll down from his eyes. His mother makes him get up. Bhishma, what is this? Do I see tears in the eyes of my son, the hero who rules this entire kingdom? Mother, these are tears of joy. I never cry in sadness or sorrow. The more pain I experience, the stronger I become. That's my son Bhishma, but unfortunately born to a selfish father. Mother, please do not say anything about him. I have done everything because I felt happy doing it. Sacrificing your life gives happiness to you. Mother, I cannot be happy when others are in grief. My heart cannot bear that. Ganga looks at her noble son Bhishma. Ganga kisses him on his forehead. You will have everlasting life. You will conquer everyone. But mother, I'm somewhat disturbed. What's bothering you, my son? Mother, father married Satyavati. She had two sons. Both sons have died. Their widows gave birth to Drudrashtra and Pandu. But Drudrashtra is blind. At least Pandu should have kids. They wrecked your life and reaped the results now. No mother, our dynasty should flourish. It will. The sons of Pandu and Drudrashtra will rule this dynasty. With your blessings mother. Ganga blesses him and leaves. Bhishma was so truthful that every word of his came true. He knew every martial art and strategy of war. He was the most respected person in the kingdom of Hastinapur. Reverentially, he was called Bhishma Pitamaha, Grandsire Bhishma. Pandu was unable to sire a child because of a curse. His first wife Kunti had, in her maiden days, received a boon from sage Durvasa, which enabled her to invoke any deity of her choice and beget a child by the deity. Pandu and Kunti decided to make use of this boon. Kunti, now chant the mantra. Kunti chants the mantra. O Lord Yama, the embodiment of truth and righteousness, bless me with a child. The next moment, Lord Yama appeared before her. Kunti, I bless you with a son. 
who will have my qualities and follow the path of justice. A beautiful baby appeared in the hands of Kunti. The baby looked bright and divine. Kunti kisses the kid. Pandu hugs the kid. Thank you, my lord. I will name him Yudhishthira as he is the son of Dharma, the righteous. Lord Yama blesses Kunti and disappears. It's amazing, Kunti. Let's have one more child. Whom shall I call now? Call upon the God of Wind. Kunti closes her eyes and chants the mantra. The next moment, the God of Wind appeared before her. He looked fierce and powerful. Kunti, why did you call me? Kunti was greatly happy to see the Lord of Wind. My Lord, please grant me a child with your qualities. You will have a son with my powers and strength. The next moment, a smart and healthy babe appeared on Kunti's arm. Thank you, my Lord, for your kindness. I will name him Bhima as he has the power and strength of the great wind god. Kunti, I bless him with the greatest power in this universe. He will be equal to 10,000 elephants. He will have a great personality and exceptional strength. The Lord disappeared. Kunti, look how strong he is. Kunti kisses the kid. I would like to have one more son who will conquer the world in terms of charm, intelligence and valor. Then call upon Lord Indra, the Lord of the Gods. Kunti closes her eyes and chants the mantra. A handsome Lord appeared before her. He looks stunningly handsome and full of radiance. Kunti and Pandu were amazed to see his radiant personality. Kunti, I am Indra. What do you need from me? My Lord, I request a son with your powers and your charm. Lord Indra smiles. Kunti, here is my son who will conquer the world with his intelligence, valor and amazing looks. He will be exceptionally handsome and have a remarkable sixth sense. Kunti falls at the feet of Lord Indra. A handsome baby appears in the hands of Kunti. Kunti kisses him. Name him Arjuna. He will be the greatest hero. Thank you, my lord. Lord Indra disappears and Pandu kisses the kid. What a handsome child. I'm delighted. Kunti kisses the kids. Madri is the second wife of King Pandu. Madri is also my sister. I can understand her agony. I will pass on the mantra to her. Let her also get kids. Kunti, I am proud of you. You have a generous heart. Madri was highly pleased with the kindness of Kunti. Kunti taught the mantra to Madri. Madri recited the mantra and called upon the twins, Ashwins. She had two sons, Nakula and Sahadeva. Madri, look how handsome they are. Madri hugs Kunti. The first son, Yudhishthira, stood for righteousness and truth as he was the son of Yama.
the second son Bhima stood for strength and power as he was the son of Vayu, the wind god. The third son Arjuna stood for heroism, power and courage as he was the son of Lord Indra. The fourth and fifth sons were Nakula and Sahadeva. They stood for wisdom and endurance as they were the sons of the Ashwins. The kids grew up as royal princes. The palace of Dhritarashtra He was blind. His wife was Gandhari. She was not able to bear to hear the news of the Pandavas. My Lord, did you hear about the five sons of Pandu? Yes. I too need a kid. My son should rule this kingdom. Don't worry. We will get a son to rule our empire. A few days passed and Gandhari delivered. But to everyone's surprise, it was not a kid. It was a ball of flesh. Gandhari was in tears when she learnt about this. Just then, Sage Vyasa came to meet Dhritarashtra. Sage Vyasa, please help us. Gandhari is not able to bear this. As it is, both of us are feeling sad at not having children. We are desperate that we have one son to rule Hastinapur. Dhritarashtra, all this has happened because of the curse. Cut the ball of flesh into hundred pieces and put them in jars of ghee. What will happen? Do what I say. Wait till tomorrow. Dhritarashtra followed Sage Vyasa's instructions. The next day, the sun did not rise with its usual charm. The skies were dark. The wolves howled and the owls screamed. It was very unusual in the palace of Hastinapur. The guards came running to Dhritarashtra. My lord, a great news. There are kids in all the hundred jars. It's really exciting to see the kids. They are crying for food. We don't know how to take care of them. Gandhari was extremely happy. Gandhari, are you happy now? We have hundred sons to rule our kingdom. Just then, Sage Vyasa entered the palace. My lord, the sage has come to meet you. Great sage, there are no words to thank you for your blessings. I can never forget this. You are like a god to this kingdom. Dhritarashtra, I have something to tell you. Dhritarashtra looked confused. Tell me, great sage. The kid in the first jaw is your first son. I have decided to name him Duryodhana. Your first son does not argue well for this kingdom. He might even destroy your dynasty. Oh God! What are you saying, sir? I have respected you for your kind guidance, but I cannot tolerate your words about my eldest son. It's better you send him away, after a few years, to a distant place. No, no, not at all. I cannot spare my son. Sage, he is my eldest son. He will rule this kingdom and will teach a lesson to all the people who oppose him. The sage left with a heavy heart. The palace of Hastinapur. The Pandavas and Kauravas grew together. 
In the meantime, King Pandu died and his wife Madri died along with him. Kunti was left alone with her five sons. Kunti, who was helpless, met Bhishma. Bhishma Pitamaha, my sons do not have a father to guide them. I will leave them with you. You are their guardian, their father, mother, teacher and God. Kunti, I will take care of them all. Don't worry. Thank you, father. Bhishma meets Dhritarashtra. Great father, welcome. I was eagerly expecting your arrival. My ill fate does not permit me to go anywhere. Dhridrashtra, don't worry about your blindness. You have hundred sons. <laughs> yes, you're right. Pitama, both of us cannot behold the outside world. We leave our kids in your care. You should look after them in every way. Gandhari, I will train them well. Don't worry. Bhishma shouldered the great responsibility of taking care of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The princes developed hatred towards each other right from day one. The eldest son of the Kauravas, Duryodhana, was most cunning. He hated Arjuna to the core as he was the most intelligent. One day, Bhishma was in a deep discussion with his ministers. The biggest responsibility lies with us now. Yes, the greatest responsibility of bringing up the princes and entrusting the great dynasty to them. But we should find a good teacher to train these princes. Pitamaha, we heard about Dronacharya, a highly intelligent and skilled teacher. He is a disciple of the great Guru Parashurama. There is none to match him now. If he is willing to train the princess, our problem is solved. I have also heard about him. But where is one to find him? We will send our men to find him. Bhishma leaves with a troubled mind. The next day, when the boys were playing in the ground, their ball fell into a well. Oh no! How will we get the ball out? It's your fault! It's you who shoved it into the well. Get inside the well and bring it. Just then, they saw a dark looking Brahmin standing near the ground. The Brahmin was none other than the famous Dronacharya, the disciple of Parasurama. He had come to Hastinapur in search of a jaw. He saw the princess struggling for the ball. Can we ask him to help us? Let's ask him. Come. Sir, can you please help us to get the ball out of the well? Drona smiled at Arjuna. What will you give me if I get that ball for you, little master? Hmm? Hmm. I will give whatever you ask for. Smart boy. Mm. I don't want anything, dear. I will get the ball for you. Drona used blades of dry grass one after another and got the ball out of the well. One after another. and got the ball out of the well. Hooray! The ball is out! Great master! Thank you, sir. The 
boys took the ball and ran to the ground to play. Sir, may I know who you are? Master, why don't you come with us to the palace? Sir, where do you come from? Dear kids, please go and tell whatever has happened here to your grandfather Bhishma. He will tell you who am I. The princess ran to Bhishma to inform him of the matter. Arjuna was highly excited. Pitamaha, we saw an excellent archer today. Pitamaha, when our ball fell inside the well, he took blades of dried grass and used them to get the ball out of the well. The ball automatically came up. It was amazing. Pitamaha, we have never seen an archer like him before. I got him. He is none other than Dronachari. Where is he now? He was on the ground. Guards! Go and bring Dronacharya immediately here. Drona was brought by the guards to Bhishma. Great teacher, I welcome you to our kingdom. Pitama, I am delighted to meet you. I have heard a lot about you and I came to Astinapur to meet you. I heard that you were looking for a good teacher to train the princess in the martial arts. Guru Dronachari, if you could take up the responsibility of training the princess and become their guru, I will be greatly relieved. This is the biggest worry for me. Pitama, I am greatly honored by this great responsibility. Thank you. Drona was moved by the kindness of Bhishma. Drona became the guru of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The princess liked their guru. He trained them well in various forms of martial arts. Of all the princes, Arjuna was the smartest. Drona liked him very much. One day, when he was training the princes, he wanted to test their caliber. Dear students, I have taught you all the tricks and turns of archery well. I hope you don't have any doubts. Yes, Master. Guru, you give me any target, I will strike it. Not you. Even I can do that. Mind it. Alright. In this skill, concentration is very important. I wanted to try a small test to check your concentration. Are you ready? Guru, tell us what to do. Look at the bird on top of the tree. No, I want you to strike the bird. That's simple, huh? I will do it, Guru. Okay, Bhima, come here. Bhima took the arrows and aimed at the bird. Bhima, what do you see now? Guru, I see the bird the tree trunk and leaves. Shh! All right. You move aside. Now, Duryodhana, come here. Duryodhana was ready to shoot the bird. Duryodhana, tell me, what do you see now? The bird, its feathers, the trees, clouds, 
प्लाज ओ नो 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 अर्जुना कम यर Arjuna was ready with his bow and arrow. Tell me now, what do you see? Guru, I see the eye of the bird. What else do you see? Guru, I am able to see the eye of the bird and nothing else. Excellent. Now, shoot the bird. Arjuna shot the bird and the bird fell down good shot this is what i expected when you concentrate on something nothing else should be visible to you but the mind you just aim even if the other things are visible to the eye as days passed the princess got trained well in the martial arts they completed their education but right from day 1 there was hatred between the pandavas and the kauravas duryodhana was jealous of arjuna he and his brothers hated yudhishthira for his honesty and straightforwardness they despised bhima for his size and hunger for more and more food it was difficult for drona to manage the princess the boys grew up in a peaceful atmosphere under the guidance of bhishma their grandfather the boys had attained 10 years of age duryodhana hated everyone but he hated the very sight of bhima one day the guru had finished classes and was taking rest under a tree the boys were in the classroom duryodhana slowly moved out of the classroom dushasana followed him what happened Where did you see that leaf yesterday? Which one? The one which made us itch. Ha! Ah, great. It is on the other side. Come on. Let's take it and place it along with Beam's books. Excellent idea. Why don't we place it on everyone? If Guru comes to know, we are finished. I hate the very sight of that fat demon. Have you seen him eating? He eats everything under the sun. Pick the leaves faster. Dushasana and Duryodhana took some leaves carefully with a cloth and went inside the classroom. The boys were playing in the classroom. Arjuna to Yudhishthira Yudhishthira can you hit that far off flag on top of the building Bhima joins in between Where is it Can't you see the flag I can see the mango a real ripe one Yudhishthira bangs his head with his hand Bhim I don't understand Does it have to be eating all the time? Brother, I don't want flags and buildings. Show me something interesting. We are having a feast here tomorrow. Oh, great news. Look at him, satisfied for a lifetime. In the meantime, Duryodhana puts the leaves amidst the books of Bhima. Bhima comes in and takes his books. What are these leaves? He takes them, squeezes them. Then he takes a candy and starts eating. But the leaves begin their work. Bhima began to itch. Why is it itching? 
It started slowly and began to itch acutely. Bhima ran in circles in the classroom, unable to bear the itch. What happened? I'm itching! Oh, itching! Did you take anything? I took some candy. Bhima was scratching at himself while answering. Arjuna, do something! <laughs> Too much food will itch like this. Yudhishthira sees the leaves on the floor. He looked at Duryodhana. Bhim, how did you get this here? It was in my book. Yudhishthira stares at Duryodhana. Hi, why do you look at me? Ask your fatso brother. Yudhishthira understood the plot. Arjuna rushed to the palm and got another bunch of leaves and squeezed the leaves in his hands. He applied the juice on Bhima. The itching stops. Mm, mm, what a great relief. Dushasana and Duryodhana leave the room. <laughs> Excellent Duryodhana. A great lesson taught to that demon. Great joke, yaar. Dushasana and Duryodhana walk away happily. That night, when all the boys were sleeping, Arjuna was awake. Yudhishthira, who was sleeping next to him, saw him awake. Arjuna, why are you still awake? How beam suffered today? Arjuna, to tell the truth, the entire plot was made by Duryodhana. Arjuna was shocked. I saw the leaves on the floor which caused the itch and I heard Duryodhana talking proud about this plot to his brothers. Arjuna, who was hearing all this, could not control his anger. Yudhishthira, how could you remain calm after knowing all this? Let Bhim not wake up. Arjuna, be calm. Even our master knows about Duryodhana. But we should make a point with our valor, not by picking up petty quarrels. Tomorrow is the feast in our Gurukul. If Duryodhana plays any tricks, I will take him to task. We will see that tomorrow. Now calm down and sleep. Next day, a feast was arranged by Guru Dronacharya to showcase the skills of his pupils. The local people and teachers from neighboring towns attended the feast. The princes assembled before the guests. Welcome, my friends. I have invited all of you to witness the martial skills of my students. The Great Princess of Astinapur. The crowd clapped and made merry. There was a lot of excitement and expectation in the air. Look at the young princes, how handsome they look. They are the future kings of Hastinapur. Who is the boy at the center? Whom are you referring? The smart one looking fierce with full of confidence. He is Arjun. Is the tall boy Duryodhan? Yes. You mean on the other side? Yes. He is looking ferocious. Who is that chubby faced one? He is Beam. Everyone knows him. The questions about the princess kept coming all the way. Drona called on a friend who was a teacher. Listen. This is Purukshit, my friend and a teacher of martial arts. He is well trained in all aspects of the martial arts. I hand over the responsibility of testing our princess to him. Hey, 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 cheers. 
you can test our princess Purukshit releases an arrow towards a tree It pierces the tree and stays there Princess whoever is able to pull my arrow from the tree is the winner The boys were murmuring among themselves Hmm big deal I think it will be simple I will pull the arrow by hand I can even uproot the tree Yudhishthira strikes at Bhim's head Bhim keep quiet Yudhishthira it's not as easy as you think Let me try it's easy Hi Bhim Before that Bhim jumped in front and waved his hand I'm here I can pull out the arrow Dear Prince your brain Of course Bhim takes his bow and shoots an arrow at the other arrow His arrow pierces the tree and lodges itself by the side of the first arrow The birds fly away from the tree Oh no Bhim comes back Hi Bhim I ask you not to go Duryodhan comes forward Master I can do it Yes you can proceed little prince Duryodhan sends his arrow But his arrow hits the other arrow and falls down The guru's arrow was as strong as the tree Duryodhan was so angry that he threw his bow and arrow down Drona picked them and gives them back to him Cheer up young prince Arjuna why don't you try Arjuna was in deep thought Yes master Arjuna steps forward The crowd cheers lustily Hore hore Duryodhana murmured to his brother All these fellows who cheer Arjuna should be beaten up We will have the time for that brother After a deep pause Arjuna stepped in Arjuna took his bow and concentrated on the arrow He sent his arrow such that it pierced the tree from the other side and struck it The force was so great that the arrow released by Purukshit fell down from the tree The crowd stood up in excitement Arjun is great Arjun is great Drona hugs Arjuna Well done my boy you will become a great king Friend now our princess will exhibit their skills to you All the boys were made to perform one by one Arjuna shot arrows in all directions and was wonderful He swung his mace in different directions and proved his might Duryodhana used his sword swung it in all directions and earned the appreciation of the crowd The crowd cheered all the princes Everyone was ready for lunch Friends I request you all to have lunch with us before leaving Yudhishthira hugs Arjuna Dushasan hugs Duryodhan In the process Duryodhana who was watching Arjuna became wild Bhima thought that it was the right opportunity to tease Duryodhana Duryodhana How was the program? Why do you ask me? The winner should be asked. Who else will we ask? The other princess started laughing and Duryodhana's face becomes red with anger. Hi Fatso, 
If you have won, you have the rights to speak. Else, keep quiet. Again, everyone laughed. Yudhishthira drags Bhim away. They all sat down for food and the food was served. In between, Duryodhana gets up and goes to his room. Brother, why did you come away? I cannot stand that fat devil. Have to do something. We will mix a poisonous herb in his food. Let him eat. He eats like a devil. Good idea. But how will I get it? It's in the garden. I will mix it. You don't stay here. People will suspect us. Duryodhana went and sat calm in the dining room. Dushasan picks up a poisonous herb and mixes it in the juice in the kitchen. He makes one of his brothers serve the juice. Bhima grabs it and drinks it in a second. Mmm, great yummy taste! Nothing happened for some time. All the boys moved to their rooms. Everyone retired to bed. Bhima fell asleep. The toxic was so powerful that he was unable to get up. It was half past one in the night. Duryodhana and Dushasana slowly crept inside the room. They dragged Bhima from his cot and took him to the nearby pond. They threw him into the pond and crept back into their beds. Bhima sank deep into the pond. A snake approached him. The snake bit him and took out the poison from his blood. It dragged him into a fine cave inside the pond. The snake now became half woman. The snake lady applied a solution on Bhima and Bhima opened his eyes. He was shocked to see the snake lady. You! You! Who are you? Yudhishthira, Arjuna. Dear Prince, don't panic. I am the queen of this pond. I know who you are and who your father is. It's my duty to rescue. Where are you all? How did I come here? Where am I? You are inside the pond, close to your Gurukul. You were poisoned and thrown inside the pond by your cousins, Duryodhan and Dushasan. I have sucked off the poison from your blood. Don't worry, I will take you to the surface. My brothers will search for me. No, they are sleeping. You can reach before that. Thank you, you're so kind. I feel blessed to save the future king of this dynasty. The snake held him in its hand and took him to the surface. Bhima kissed the snake. Bye, Prince. Take care. He walked straight to his room and laid down on his cot as if nothing had happened. Next morning, all the boys got ready for class. Kaurava's room. Ha ha ha! Don't laugh loudly. Hey, let them search for the fat devil. Shh! It's getting late. We have to be there before our guru. Duryodhan, Dushasan and few other brothers reached the training spot. Drona was an old smiles to welcome the princess. Princess, 
You all look confident and smart. Just then, the Pandavas arrived. Duryodhana was shocked to see Bhima. He scratched Dushasana. Hey, look, the fatso is here. I don't understand. How? Bhima looked at Duryodhana, and Duryodhana looked elsewhere. Dushasana bent his head down. Bhima stared at Duryodhana. His eyes were fiery. Drona was instructing the princes, but Bhima's eyes were on Duryodhana. The session was over. Arjuna approached Bhima. Bhim, what are you staring at? You were not at all listening to the guru. Bhima was still staring at Duryodhana, who moved away. Yudhishthira joins Arjuna. Tell me, Bhim, what makes you dull? Bhima did not answer. He is not well from the morning. Let's take him into the room. Arjuna and Yudhishthira took him to the room. Arjuna gives him some buttermilk. Bhim drinks it. Tell me, Bhim, what makes you dull? Where is all your mischief? What's up? Bhim was in tears. He told them everything. How Duryodhana had done him in and how the snake lady had saved him. Recap of everything. What happened to Bhim in Pawn? Arjuna rose up like a storm with his arrows. I will kill Duryodhana and then speak. Yudhishthira gets up with the same speed and stops Arjuna. Arjuna, stop! Don't do anything in haste. Yudhishthira, why are you stopping me? Tomorrow, even we both will be killed. Arjuna, no one can kill us. I'm not scared, but I don't want anyone to harm my brother. Arjuna, I'm more angry than you. But think once, if we fight, then our grand Shia Bhishma will be put to shame. We are answerable to our uncle Dhridrashtra and mother Kunti. Arjuna becomes emotional. How long? How long should we quietly bear all this torture? Wait, we will have our time. But at least we should warn that cruel beast. Come with me. Yudhishthira takes Bhima and Arjuna to Duryodhana's room. Duryodhana was lying on his cot and Dushasana was near him eating fruits. Duryodhana! Arjuna screamed at the top of his voice. On hearing his voice, the birds hid themselves in the trees. Duryodhana sprang up from the bed. Dushasana started perspiring heavily. Arjuna came near Duryodhana. Duryodhana pretended as if nothing had happened. Hey, why do you yell at the top of your voice? Arjuna comes near him. Hey, if something happens to any one of us, you will not return to Hastinapur. 
<laughs> Yudhishthira touches Arjuna's shoulder to restrain him. Duryodhana is pushed by Arjuna to the wall. Bhim was watching everything. Dushasan enters and tries to push Bhim. Bhim gives him a blow and he is cast on the other side of the road. Duryodhana, are you not ashamed to think of such mean things born in a royal family? Yudhishthira, why do you ask this piece? Duryodhana could not answer. Only for the sake of your father I am sparing you. Do not try your dirty tricks with us anymore. Hey, you will learn a lesson from me very soon. Arjuna, Yudhishthira and Bhim left the room. Duryodhana adjusts his garment and straightens himself. Dushasan joins him. Duryodhana, what should we do now? Dushasan will be the king and these guys will be our servants. Don't bother about them. Near the ashram of Drona, where Arjuna and his brothers used to take lessons in various arts. There lived a small bright boy who belonged to the hunter community. His name was Ekalavya. He lived in the nearby forest and had great desire to learn the art of archery from Dronacharya. One day when he was at his home, He heard the howl of wolf. He started questioning his mother. Mother, what a strange noise. Dear son, it's all those dangerous wolves and foxes. Mother, can't we do something to eliminate them? Who can face the wolves? Only an exceptional archer can. Why can't I be an exceptional archer? You have to get trained. I have seen the princess getting trained in the ashram. Dear son, they are the princess, but we are from a lower community and Guru Drona will not accept you. Mother, education is for all. I want to save the people of our forest. Do not talk big words. This is our faith. Mother, I will ask Guru Dronacharya. They will not accept you, my son. Mother, I will give a try. All right, you approach the Guru. The next day, he approached Guru Drona. Drona was surprised to see the young hunter boy in his ashram. He fell at the feet of Drona. What can I do for you, my boy? Guru, I am Eklavya. My father was the head of this forest, but he is no more. I want to learn archery and protect my people from these wild animals. Will you teach me? My son, I'd like to help you, but I am tightly scheduled in training the princess. Thank you, Guru. Ekalavya leaves the place. But the boy was not put off as his determination knew no bounds. Near his house, under a tree, Ekalavya installed a clay idol of Dronacharya that he worshipped as his guru. Daily, morning and evening, he put flowers and natural perfumes in front of the image and 
trained himself in archery. The talented young Ekalavya soon acquired great skills in archery. He attributed his success to his guru Dronacharya. He became a great hunter and all the wild animals were scared of him. The people lived in peace in the forest. One day, as it happened, Acharya Drona and Arjuna were passing near the hut of Ekalavya. It was a pleasant and peaceful afternoon. People were taking rest in their homes. But the tranquility and silence was broken by the constant barking of a dog. What a noise! It's barking without a break! It's annoying! Ekalavya, who was at his house, did not like the noise. He did not see Arjuna and Drona. He sent a series of arrows from his house, which shut up the dog's mouth. The dog was not able to open its mouth, leave alone bark. Arjuna, what happened? Suddenly it stopped barking. Arjuna walked a few steps and saw the dog. He was stunned. He came running to his master. Guru, come and see this. Guru Drona was shocked to see the dog's mouth shut with arrows. Oh, only an expert archer could have done this. Arjuna became curious. Let's find out who the person is. Arjuna went in search of the archer. Just then, a man passes by. Hey, come here. The man came nervously to Drona. I want to know who is the best archer here. Sir, the best archer in our entire forest is none other than Ekalavya. Drona was shocked to hear this name. Drona stood dumbfounded. Sir, can I leave? Where is his house? The last hut is his house. He's a small boy, sir. Drona takes Arjuna to Ekalavya's house. Ekalavya was adjusting his bow and he hears someone coming inside. He turns back and is overwhelmed to see Drona and Arjuna. His God and Guru visiting him in his hut. He ran and fell at the feet of his Guru. Guru, I cannot control my happiness. Ekalavya, how did you learn this art? Guru, when I approached you, you asked me to practice on my own. So I set up your idol and learned myself. Arjuna's face turned dark. Drona was able to understand the situation. He did not know what to tell the poor boy. Who was highly devoted. He had promised Arjuna that he will make him the greatest archer in the world and none could equal him. Ekalavya took Drona and Arjuna to his guard. Drona had no words to speak, seeing his idol adorned with flowers. 
Drona was in deep thought. He thought that he should not allow anybody to compete with Arjuna. His duty stood first. Guru, hey Kalavya, I am very happy to see your dedication and love. You have learnt all this from me as your guru. But you have not paid any fee to me. Guru, you ask me anything, I will give you. Hey Kalavya, will you give your right thumb as a fee? The trees and the wind around stood still for a moment. Even Arjuna was stunned to listen to the unusual and almost cruel demand of his guru. To ask for the thumb of an archer was equivalent to killing him. How could Dronacharya demand such a heavy price from one disciple to protect the owner of the other? Tears rolled down his eyes. But Ekalavya's love for his guru was so great that he was even prepared to give his life for him. Ekalavya had no such remorse. Unruffled and with deep humility, cheerfully and without protest, he cut his right thumb and placed at the feet of Dronacharya. Gods in the heavens silently praised the greatness of Ekalavya's sacrifice. Guru, even this life belongs to you. Unable to control himself, Drona hugs Ekalavya. Drona blesses Ekalavya and leaves with a heavy heart. Later, Ekalavya practiced with his left hand and became a big archer. He helped Arjuna in the great war of Mahabharata.